This is Phil Koopman with a tutorial on Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow can cause not only system crashes, but also task death and other potentially dangerous system malfunctions. You are at risk for Stack Overflow problems if any of the following apply. You have not done analysis to determine the worst case size for your stack. You use recursion in your embedded system software. Or your processor does not provide hardware protection for stack overflows, potentially enabling a stack overflow to corrupt other non-stack memory. The stack is an area of memory that stores data used by subroutines or other types of functions. Whenever you are using local variables in C or C++, those are managed automatically by the compiler and live on the stack. Behind the scenes, the stack is also used for things like subroutine return addresses. It is also where registers are saved when processing interrupts. Thus, anytime you do a subroutine call, you are putting data on the stack. If you are using a locally declared variable array or other large data structure, you are potentially putting lots of data on the stack. Don't forget that interrupts and operating system calls also use the stack for data. The thing to worry about is what happens if the stack overflows. If you have memory protection, you'll potentially get a fatal system exception. But in the common case, where you do not have hardware memory protection on a small processor, it could be even worse. That's because the stack can corrupt other memory that lies past the allocated stack memory area. In embedded processors that don't have memory protection, the biggest risk from stack overflow is memory corruption. Simply put, if the stack gets too big and exceeds the space allocated for it, it can stomp on other memory. This stomping is likely to hit statically allocated variables and global variables. Depending on your system's memory layout, it can also corrupt real-time operating system data structures, which can do nasty things to your operating system. If you've worked with small micros, you've probably had the experience that stack overflow causes a system crash. But that's not the worst thing that can happen. Rather, memory corruption can instead cause the death of tasks in a multitasking system, or can otherwise alter task control blocks Further, it could leave you vulnerable to security exploits via intentionally overflowing the stack to gain access to operating system variables. There are several ways to prevent and detect stack overflow. The best way to prevent it is to analyze the maximum possible stack depth for your system to prove that stack overflow can never happen. To do this, use a tool that analyzes the maximum possible stack depth. Make sure that the tool can account for the worst case nesting of operating system calls and interrupt service routines in its analysis. In addition, it is helpful to use a memory management unit or MMU to provide hardware based memory protection. This can still result in a runtime fault if the stack overflows, but at least it will avoid the problems that can come from corrupting memory that lives beyond the stack. An additional technique you can use is putting stack sentinels in memory when running your software. This idea starts with putting some unusual predefined constant value in all memory locations allocated to the stack before the program runs. In this example, we filled memory with the value AA44CC33, but any value unlikely to be seen in your executing software will work. Then, when the program executes, it will put other values into stack memory as it uses the stack. Every time a subroutine or interrupt is called, its use of local variables will hit its footprint into the stack, changing the sentinel values to something else. When interrupts have completed and subroutines have returned to their calling programs, those values will remain unchanged. You can then periodically check stack memory to see how many sentinel values are left unchanged. If there are fewer remaining sentinel values than you expected, then you know that your stack has gotten bigger than you thought it would and can take some appropriate action to manage the situation. At development time, you might make your stack bigger to leave more spare room. At runtime, you might see that you've consumed more stack than you thought 
and reset the system or safe the system before memory corruption can spill over the stack boundary and cause even worse failures. Here are some best practices for ensuring that stack overflow is not a problem in your system. First, determine the worst case stack depth. Using Sentinels during program testing is a good start and will probably tell you if you have huge problems. But it is very difficult to observe the true worst case combination of subroutine calls, nested with operating system calls, nested with interrupt service routines, and their effect on stack depth during testing. Therefore, it's better if you can use a static analysis tool to do stack depth checking. Or, if need be, disassemble the code, build a call graph, including the OS and interrupts, and count up the worst case stack depth for yourself. When doing this analysis, make sure you find the actual worst case and add in a safety margin. In processors that have multiple levels of interrupt priority, you have to be careful to make sure you look at one interrupt from each priority level if they can be concurrently active and add all of them up to get the worst case depth. And don't forget that interrupt nesting might happen while you're in the middle of an operating system function that also uses a lot of stack. So make sure you think through the true worst case situation when putting together your picture of worst case stack depth. After you've done analysis, it's prudent to also protect your stack at runtime in case you miss something. It might also be that a later software change affects your maximum stack depth without you realizing it. So as a defensive measure, either enable your memory management unit to provide hardware protection or use stack sentinels at runtime. If you're using sentinels at runtime, you should periodically do some sort of check to make sure that there are several sentinels left so that you can take corrective action before your stack actually overflows. Even if you have an MMU, stack sentinels can still be useful to give you a warning that there's a problem with your system that it's not behaving the way you expected. One general rule is to avoid the use of recursion. Many static analysis tools cannot predict maximum stack depth if you use recursion. Additionally, be mindful that big data structures can make the stack huge. So there might be times when you make a large data structure file static instead of local, just to make it easier to deal with stack size estimation and stack overflow protection.